Hi folks. This week's video will be focusing on Gmail. I will be talking about some of the features of Gmail and some tools that will help make using Gmail a little bit easier. We'll start off here at the top left hand of the screen. The three lines or the hamburger icon we call it. Um, that's our main menu. By clicking on those three lines you'll notice that our features on the left hand side will appear and disappear. That just allows us to see more of our email. Even while we have it disappeared, if we bring our mouse pointer to it, it'll actually expand for us and open up. So it depends on what you like, whether you want it to always show or just show when you come down into the area, it's completely up to you. I like to show it. Here we have our inbox. We have access to other emails that we might have either starred or snoozed. Uh, we can get access to our sent emails, any drafts we might have started that we need to access again, our spam folder, our trash, and then underneath that we also have our labels. Some people think these are folders, but they're actually called labels. They do act as folders sometimes. Um, but the cool thing about labels is that we can actually label email and keep them in our inbox. We don't necessarily have to um, store emails in folders. Um, we can keep them visible in our inbox as well as having them labeled as a certain category. So what do I mean by that? So here we have our inbox. If I select an email in our inbox, any email, we'll see that our toolbar will appear at the top of the screen. If you have no email selected, you will not see a toolbar, but once you select an email, that toolbar will appear. Now, some of us have words in our toolbar and some of us have icons. I have icons. If you don't know what those icons stand for, if you just bring your mouse pointer up to that icon, it'll tell you what that icon means. So this icon stands for archive. This icon stands for delete. This icon stands for move to a specific label. And this icon stands for just keeping the email in your inbox and labeling it. So labels act as categories that will help us categorize our, our emails and also make them easier to locate when we're trying to find them. So if I wanted to grab this email and label it, I can come up here to my label icon and I can choose one of the labels that I've already created. If the label that I'd like to label uh, this email does not appear, I can actually create a label straight from here. So let's just say I wanted to create a new label and I'm going to name this label administrator. Once I create that label, I could nest it under an existing label. It's like having folders and subfolders, or I can just go ahead and create it straight from here. Once I do, my label appears over here on the left hand side of the screen and it also appears in my email. So now this email has just been labeled administrator. The cool thing about labels is that I can color code them. They default to this grayish color, but if I wanted to, if I click the three dots, one of the things that I can do is provide that label a color. So once I do that, I come over here to label color and I can choose a nice color like this blue. And now my administrator label not only turns blue in my email, but also over to the side here, this label icon also turns blue. When I click on the label icon over to the left, I would see any email that I would have given that label to. So right now it's just this one email that I just labeled as administrator. If I wanted to go back to my inbox, I just scroll up my list and click on inbox. Now, what some people don't realize is that your inbox is technically a label as well. So this email 
is still in my inbox with the administrator label on it. If I click on the email, I can remove any label that I might have given this email. So if I wanted to take away the administrator label, I could. I could also take away the inbox label. And when I do, and I go back to my inbox, that email no longer appears in my inbox, but guess what? If I come over here to my administrator label and click on it, there's that email. So these labels can kind of act as folders or they can act as tags for labels that you want to keep in your inbox just so that you can uh, quickly identify uh, certain emails that you might have attached a label to. Also on the left hand side where my labels appear, if I click on this more button underneath my last label, I get access to even more labels. I get access to any chats that I might have started in Google Hangouts, but I can also create new labels from here and I can click on manage labels where I can add, delete, and change any labels that I might have created. We also can access the manage labels area from our settings wheel and I'll show you that in a minute. Now underneath all of my labels on the left hand side I also have access to Google Hangouts. Here you'll see three icons. One is for your Google Hangout contacts. The other is to go to your Google Hangout conversations and the third is to make a phone call. Yes, a phone call from your Gmail. But if I grab the top of the Hangouts area in Gmail, click down and drag it up, I can expand this section to make it easier to see. So if I wave my mouse pointer over that contact person, I now have the ability to send an email to that person schedule an event with that person, send a message to that person, or start a video call with that person. I can even add that person to my contact list if I so choose. Now, going across the top of the screen, I can click on this gear icon to get to my settings. Some of the things that I can do from my settings drop-down list are this. I can change my display density. I can also click on configure inbox. I click here. Now I can choose to have different tabs for different categories that my emails might fall into. Now your primary category you cannot turn on and off. You'll always have to have at least your primary category or tab set up. But I can also set up a social category or tab, which will separate any of my messages from social networks. Um, I have an updates tab that I can click on if I'd like and a forums tab. Now, if they're checked, you will see them across the top of your inbox. If you uncheck them, they will disappear. So right now I have my primary, my social, and my promotions checked off. So when I click save, you will see my primary my social and my promotions tabs set up here. If I come back to the gear, go back to configure inbox, if I uncheck social and promotions, I no longer have those categories. So all my email will now show up in my primary. I click save and once it reloads, you'll notice there are no more tabs across the top of your screen. Also under the gear icon, I can come back down here and click on settings. Now there's a lot to your email settings. I am not going to go over everything. I just want to point out that this is where you would come to your settings. Most of us will do a lot of work in our general tab. 
Now we do have other tabs across here that you can investigate on your own. There's a labels tab. You can come over here to inbox. If you click on inbox, you can change the type of inbox that you have. Right now, it's set for default. But if I wanted to have all of my unread messages appear first, or my important messages appear first, or my starred messages appear first, I can set that up right here. I like to have my unread messages appear first. Make sure that I save my changes. Now when I go back to my inbox, all of my unread messages will appear first, and then everything else will appear after that. Also under settings, again, most of our work will be under the general tab. There's so many different things you can explore here, one of which is undo send. If you allow for the undo send button to appear after you've clicked send, you can set up a cancellation period from 5, 10, 20, or 30 seconds. And what that does is once you click send, it will hold your email in like a limbo state for however long you uh, set it up for, for 30 seconds, say. And that will allow you to actually click a button called undo send to stop that email from going for that time period. We have the ability to create a signature. A signature is uh, some language that will appear at the bottom of your email that you set up for yourself. Some people like to put their contact information at the bottom of their email automatically. Uh, some people like to put an inspirational quote or a fancy saying. You can set that up here. Another really great tool is called Vacation Responder. And once you've um, set anything up, in settings, you always have to click save changes when you're finished so that those changes will take effect. Okay, moving over to the right a little bit more, you're going to see a calendar icon. We have our Google Keep icon and we have our tasks icon. Simply clicking on that icon will have that feature appear. So if I wanted access to my Google Calendar while I'm in Gmail, all I have to do is click on the calendar icon and now I can see the day's events from calendar. And I can go to different days of the week if I need to check to see, hey, what am I doing on the 28th of February? I can see if I have anything set up. And I could also add an event to calendar without ever having to leave Gmail. If I did not want to see the calendar on the right hand side of my inbox, all I have to do is click this X and it disappears. Another icon over to the right is our tasks icon. If I click on tasks, Google's task pane will appear. And tasks in Google is simply an electronic to-do list. If I wanted to add tasks to my technology facilitators list, I simply just click the plus sign add task and then I would just now add a task. I can edit the task which will allow me, if I needed to, I can add a date to that task, which essentially gives it a due date. So if I click on add date and I need to make sure that this video is finished by tomorrow, I just click on tomorrow's date. And now I've just set a due date for this task. Um, also, you're not limited to just one list under tasks. We all have a default list called your name plus the list but you can actually create new lists from here. A lot of the times we have to search email, but a lot of us don't realize that we have this drop-down arrow in our search bar, which will allow us to get very specific as to what our search should uh, consist of. So I can say, search for emails from a certain person, search for emails that I might have sent to a certain person, or an email that I met has a certain subject or if I don't know any of those things but I know it contains certain words I can look for emails that contain certain words or doesn't have certain words I can indicate that it was within this certain date range with either one day three days a week two weeks so if I wanted to search for an email that was in a two-week range from the 6th of February. I can just check that right here. And then I can even search certain labels or uh, inboxes. So I can either search all my mail 
or I can choose just to search my inbox, search certain labels that I might have created. So I can get very specific in respect to my search. And then the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is filters. So filters are a really awesome tool. If I go back to the gear, go to settings. Um, one of the things that I can do is set up filters and block email addresses. When I click on filters and blocked addresses, as you can see, I already have a few filters already set up. If you don't, all you have to do is come down here to the bottom and click on create new filter. And what you'll see is the same criteria that we just saw in our search. So once I've um, set up my criteria, I hit create filter. Any email that fits this criteria, I might want to skip the inbox and just archive it. I might want to mark it as red or star it. I might want to choose a certain label to attach to it. I might want to forward it to another address. I can delete it right away. I have a bunch of different options that I can choose when creating that filter. And once I've done that, I hit create filter at the bottom. So now my, that filter appears right here in my list of filters. If I ever wanted to get rid of it, I just come over here next to it, click delete. It wants me to confirm, do you really want to delete this filter? Yes, I do. And now it's gone. That was a lot, um, but that's it. Anything else you uh, would like to explore would be included in that um, hyperdoc. I have a bunch of great links to cheat sheets and forums and uh, websites and videos that will allow you to learn a lot more about Gmail than you ever thought was possible. But in this video, what I've done was I've tried to just show you the things that um, I think are important and that um, you would be responsible for when creating your, um, your screencast um, at the end of the week. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to help you.